Hey guys, Marcus here. Welcome to another video in the how to make an arcade for free series. Today we're going to be talking about software. And well, there are a lot of options for how to run older games um, within a, a normal computer like an x86 computer like a Pentium 4 or a Core 2 Duo or something like that or even your old laptop. What if we didn't have to mess around with Windows at all? What if there was a way that we could have an operating system in one of these and just plug it into the USB port of any computer and make that computer a dream emulation machine. That is exactly what we're going to be doing today so stick around and I'll see you after the intro. This video is made possible in part by Fusion Retro Books. Hold there youngster, do you think you know retro? Well, let me tell you, you don't. But Fusion Retrobooks is here to help. From the Commodore 64 to the Amiga and the ZX Spectrum, Fusion Retro has a book on your favorite 8-bit computer. Relive the school park brawls of yesteryear by reading about how these little machines changed the course of history forever. Hardware not your thing? Don't worry. There are books on many other subjects, like famous developers, intriguing labels, tech. There's even original chip to music. They even have digital copies of their books, so you can finish buying and start reading. If you have a need for retro that you simply cannot satisfy, visit FusionRetroBooks.com and get your fix today. Hey guys, welcome back. So, we're going to be taking a look at the different software options for you guys when you have to, you know, create your own arcade machine. There are quite a few options. I'm gonna be looking at the top options here. They're all gonna be free. They all have their pros and cons. And then I'm gonna show you what I ended up choosing for the systems, the system that we're gonna be building, okay? So one of the first options is Latka. Um, this is a bespoke Linux distribution, which means it's an OS onto itself. You don't need to be running li uh, Windows or Mac OS. Uh, it runs by itself and it is quite good. The thing that I don't like as much is that um, it's really not as user friendly or as good looking as why I ended up choosing. Um, also it needs, as far as I understand, it needs to be set up into the hard drive. Um, we're gonna get into why that's important for me later on, but just, be, just know that one of the reasons why I chose what I chose instead of Lakka is the the matter of having to install like a dual boot setup on on the hard drive i just didn't want to go through that um for many reasons uh however this is a perfect choice for those who want to install on a hard drive permanently and also for those who have a setup hardware wise that is compatible with laka um, as it is based on linux it is compatible with most things but I found the installation to be a little bit finicky so uh, there were many reasons why I didn't choose uh, Lakka as you can as you can probably tell by now but it is a very valid option now there's also recall box and the recall box ecosystem is even bigger you, you can actually go to recallbox.com and buy all the hardware that you need uh, to to get your own retro gaming machine up and running it's based on the Raspberry Pi and that is one of the reasons why I didn't choose this. This was specifically made kind of for the Raspberry Pi and then retrofitted to x86 to the PC platform. And to me that's kind of a no-no. I want something that was bespoke, that was made originally for x86. That way we're not trying to fit uh, you know, a square block into a round hole. Um, so, you know, it's also, like I said, it's a very valid option. I'm sure it works fine. Uh, they even have the, the system if you wanna download it by itself. But me personally, I want something that was made specifically for x86. Next, we have RetroPie. RetroPie is even more based around the Raspberry Pi, as you can probably guess by the name. Uh, it's also available on PC, but like I mentioned before, I want something that was specifically developed for x86. 
and this is just not it. Um, there are many advantages to running RetroPie. For example, the community is great. Uh, I'm sure it, it works fine. I, it's just not my personal choice to run something that was originally made for another platform and then retrofit it onto PC. I prefer to have something that was made specifically for PC. And then we go to RetroArch. Uh, RetroArch is actually the front end. Um, you can install RetroArch on basically almost any uh, operating system. And you know, the advantage of RetroArch, aside from the huge community and the fact that it runs pretty much on any operating system and hardware, um, the reality is that RetroArch needs its operating system. So if you already have an operating system set up, like your main Windows gaming machine, then RetroArch is probably your best option because you just download it and you run it inside Windows. You don't have to set up any extra operating system or anything like that. You can run it alongside whatever you have going on and it will work just fine. Um, however, I wanted something bespoke for the arcade. I don't need Windows on my arcade machine. So I wanted something that was made specifically just to run as an arcade machine. And that is where Batochera Linux comes in. Batochera is fantastic for many reasons. Uh, the first one is that it is an OS specifically made to run as an emulation machine, like Laka and Recallbox and RetroPie. The difference is that you don't need to install it on a hard drive. You can actually just flash Batochera Linux onto your USB drive and then plug that USB into any computer and boot it from there and it will just work. This is great because one, I don't wanna be dealing with old hard drives. You know, I have nostalgia for messing around with old uh, hard drives, but the truth is I just want something that works. And I much rather have a USB key that I can unplug from the arcade, plug into my machine, do everything that I need to do, like load extra games or tweak the settings or anything like that and just unplug from my main machine, which works great, and then plug it back into the arcade cabinet. Actually, installing it is super, super easy. So let's go through the installation process and let me show you how easy it actually is. First thing you have to do is click on this Get Patochera Linux link and it'll download your disk image. As I mentioned many times before, I'm using an old desktop. So I'm choosing the x86 build and I'm gonna download here. Uh, it's about one gig, uh, so it's not that big, but it's not that small. Let's just save it to the desktop here. Another thing that you have to download in order for you to be able to flash the Batochera Linux image onto your, onto your USB drive is Balena Etcher. So just go into the description box below, grab the link there, or simply Google Balena Etcher. And you will go to the, to the Flasher uh, website and just download the little Flasher installer. And there we go. Download for Windows x86 or x64. All right, guys, so after downloading both Balena Etcher and your Batochera Linux image, what you're gonna do is install Balena Etcher and then run it. This, this window here is what's gonna pop up next. And as you can see, it has already detected that I have a USB drive plugged in. And now what I'm gonna do is simply drag my Batochera Linux image here onto this window and it's ready to flash. And it's easy as that. You just click flash and accept your uh, Windows command processor prompt. You click yes and then it'll just start installing simple as that and that is it guys you don't have to do any setting up you don't have to install anything else that is all you have to do then you just take that usb drive and put it into the computer that you were going to be using as your emulation station boot it from the usb drive and you should be good to go there is nothing else that you need to do and that is one of the things that I love about Batochera Linux is that it requires no setup whatsoever. It's 100% plug and play. For me, that's a huge advantage and I hope that you guys, you know, uh, appreciate the fact that it's so easy to set up as well. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that when you flash Batochera onto your USB drive, 
it becomes a Linux partition. So it can be a little bit of a pain to recover that USB drive if you wanna use it again as a USB drive instead of you know just your main emulation station storage. And that's about it guys. Uh, as you can see, the installation procedure is very easy. There's no setup. We're gonna be trying this out on the next video once I'm done setting up the hardware for this project. It's gonna be super cool and I hope you stick around and see you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the like button and leave us a comment below. Also, spare a moment to share this video on Twitter, Facebook, and all your social media pages. To get updates on all of our latest videos delivered straight to your inbox, subscribe now using the link on the screen.